is up you guys my name is Jessica Reed if you're new here to my channel and I just wanted to intro this video real quick to give you a little background story so that you're not confused or anything so a few weeks ago I had the amazing opportunity to be able to share my testimony at my home church at my youth group in front of so many high school students and I just got to proclaim the faithfulness the freedom and the victory that Christ has personally given me in my life over the last few years I'm so excited that I get to post this video and be able to share it with you guys because I kind of teased about it a little bit on Instagram and you all said that you wanted to see this video. My hope for this video is that my testimony will really encourage you no matter what you're walking through in your life right now. Know that God loves you, he is for you and not against you. So I hope you guys really enjoy this video. Make sure you comment down below and let me know if anything I said really impacted you because I'm just so excited to be able to share God's faithfulness in my life personally. So I love you guys and I hope you enjoy. Uh, tonight we have a very, very special guest with us. Um, who, tears, cue the tears, is going to be moving to Colorado soon to intern with John Bevere, which is exciting. Um, but she's going to be around for a little while longer, but God has used her in some, in some incredible ways and done some incredible things in her life. So will you do me a favor? Will you guys all stand up all across the room one more time? Stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up. And will you all give a huge round of applause for Jessica Reed? What's up, Epic? <laughs> Well, real quick, I just want to say thank you so much to Joe for this opportunity to speak tonight. You guys, we seriously have the best youth pastor ever. So give it up for Joe. Well, I'm so excited to be speaking to you guys tonight, and I am so expectant of what God is going to do. The fact that I'm standing here is truly a miracle, and tonight I'm going to share with you guys my testimony and what God has personally done in my life, and I believe like whatever you came in here with tonight, God wants to set you free. He wants to do an amazing new work in your life. He wants to encounter you in a way that you've never encountered him before, and tonight there's going to be freedom in Jesus' name, so you guys can sit down. So some of you guys may know me. I'm a student leader here at Epic. And like Joe said, I'm actually gonna be leaving in a little bit sadly. Tonight I think is actually my last service, which is a little sad because I love you all so much. But I'm here to share with you guys my testimony and what God has personally done in my life. And I'm just so excited because God has seriously changed my life and done a 180. And so I'm just gonna start with kind of how I came to know Christ. I was blessed and fortunate enough to grow up in a Christian household. My mom and dad are actually right there. And <laughs> give them a round of applause. And they seriously just poured into me my entire life. And I remember from like the time I was a baby listening to like Casting Crowns and Mercy Me. If you guys like grew up back then, like you would, yeah, bet it. <laughs> um, so yeah, I grew up in an amazing Christian household. And I remember when I was five years old, I fully gave my life to Christ. And I didn't really fully know what that meant yet, but I knew that Jesus died for me and wanted to forgive me of my sins. And so I accepted him into my heart, but it wasn't until about the end of my freshman year of high school when I really started to understand what it meant to have a personal relationship with Jesus. And I'm here to tell you tonight that if you have a relationship with Jesus or you don't, he wants to do something amazing in your life. And I believe that each and every one of you have an amazing purpose and destiny placed on your life that only you can fulfill and that you're not an accident. You're meant to be here. You're meant to be here tonight because God wants to do something in your life tonight. So I'm going to start with just my testimony and sharing when I really started to encounter Jesus and some of the trials that I have overcome. My high school years were not what I expected at all. I thought it was going to be fun and I guess kind of like the movies, but it really wasn't. Um, I don't know, do we have like any athletes in here? Yeah? Yeah? Uh, okay. <laughs> um, so when all growing up through like middle school and in high school, like my dream was to play division one college basketball. And I was, yeah. <laughs> um, I was being recruited actually in my freshman year to play division one college basketball. That was always my dream. That's like my whole life plan was like, I'm gonna play in college. I'm gonna be a college coach. That's what my whole life was set on. And at the end of my freshman year of high school, I started to notice that I was getting tired all the time in practice. And I'm like, you know what? It's just like normal. Like, 
I'm a high school student, I have schoolwork, I have practice every single day, but then I started noticing that in all of my classes, I like could not remember anything, and I was an honor student, and so I was kind of like, this is weird, like I can't remember anything that I'm reading or I'm learning, and then I was like, okay, I can't even add a simple arithmetic problem. I went from like being an honor student, like I said, to I started getting so sick, and I noticed like in practice that my heart started skipping beats that started blacking out multiple times a day, and I started to get a little bit scared. I'm like, okay, mom and dad, like this is not normal, and I remember one night my mom took me to the ER, and I had never been that sick in my entire life, and I just remember laying in that hospital bed and looking over at my mom, and I was like, mom, like, I actually think I'm dying right now. Like, I don't know what's wrong with me. And I was like the healthiest person and just like tanked within like a few months. And so we started to look at a bunch of different doctors. We went to specialists trying to figure out what was wrong with me because I literally had no energy. I could not do schoolwork. I could not play basketball. I just had like the worst symptoms ever. And I ended up finding out that I was diagnosed with Lyme disease. Now, if you guys don't know what that is, it's when you get bit by a tick. And for a lot of people, you just get like muscle soreness and you're just fatigued and tired. But for me, it took an entire effect on my body to the point where I was like bedridden all day. Like I said, I was blacking out. I had heart problems. Like one time it felt like I was having a heart attack and my heart was just like racing out of my chest and it was really scary. So. I remember when we had the meeting with the doctor, um, he looked at me and he's like, how are you functioning right now? Like, how are you playing basketball, like the captain of your team and schoolwork and all that? And I was like, I mean, I feel terrible, but I just keep pushing through it because like no pain, no gain, right? So <laughs> that was like my MO. I'm like, oh, I'm fine. Like I just kept pushing it aside. And he looked at me and he's like, uh, we got all your lab results back and you have no nutrients in your body, you have no hormones, um, basically you have nothing left and like I don't even know how you're walking or functioning. You should be in a wheelchair, paralyzed and not being able to do anything like at all. And so it like hit me in that moment, I was like, whoa. Um, and I just remember like fear started creeping in and I was like, like, why me? Like, all my friends were fine. Why was it me? And so over the next, I would say, like, three months, I was undergoing treatment. So every single day, my mom and I, except on the weekend, Saturday and Sunday, my mom and I drove out to Clearwater, and I got treatment. So I got IV therapy treatment in my arm. I was, like, hooked up to an IV therapy drip for like five to six hours a day and I sat there and like did nothing. And I was taking like hundreds of supplements every single day. I had doctor's appointments all the time. I was getting like 50 tubes of blood taken every single week um, on top of multiple things. And I just remember like feeling worse even though I should have been feeling better. And the place that I was in, it was hard because looking around, I had so many friends, you know, that I made there and I would just see them and one day they would be, you know, not feeling great, but they would be okay. And the next day they'd show up and they'd be in a wheelchair. They couldn't walk and they had sunglasses on because the light was just like too much for them. And I know that God seriously protected me the whole time because like the fact that I wasn't even in a wheelchair was like a miracle. Um, but that whole time I was like, God, why is this me? Like, this isn't fair. All my friends are out playing. They're living their dream. They're living my dream. And I'm sitting in a chair every single day getting IV therapy treatment. And so I'll be honest with you guys. That was seriously one of the hardest times in my life. And a lot of my friends that I really thought were my friends just dropped away. No one checked in on me. And it was really hard because I would do anything for my friends. And they were like, just gone. It was like I wasn't playing with them anymore. I was like, kind of forget Jessica. And so I just remember feeling so isolated, so lonely, like undergoing the hardest thing I'd ever went through. And I didn't have any friends except like my mom and my dad and my family. So during that time, I just started to be like, you know what, God, I'm going to put my hope in you, my faith in you, my trust in you. And the verse that God gave my, well, there were two verses that God gave my family and I is Romans 8:18. And it says, and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. And Romans 8, 18, 
For I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. And I hung on to those verses every single day. And I just believe that I was like, God, I don't know why I'm here and why I'm going through this, but I believe that I'm going to be healed and that I'm going to be back on the court again or doing whatever I'm supposed to do. And so I remember I started to get a little bit better, but my symptoms were just so bad that I was like, oh my gosh, I missed a whole entire year of school, you guys. Like I should have graduated high school last year. I graduated this year because I missed a whole entire year of school. And so I remember one day my mom came in my room and she's like, hey, Jessica, can I talk to you about something? And I was like, okay. And so she came in and she was like, God told me that he wants me to take you to this healing miracle service in Wentzville, Missouri. And he wants you to experience his power. Like God's exact words were, I want Jessica to experience my power. And I was like, okay, mom. I know that God still does miracles and, you know, I've seen them happen, but like, I don't really think that's for me. Like, honestly, you guys, I kind of thought she was a little bit crazy. I was like, uh, I don't know about that. But the Holy Spirit started working on my heart and the next two weeks, I'd just be sitting there getting my IV drip, watching Netflix. I'm like, this is so boring. Like, I want to be at, like doing something again. I want to be a kid. All my friends are like living and I'm like, feel like an old person. So I... I was like, you know what? Holy Spirit was like, Jessica, like, seriously, what do you have to lose? If I told you that I'm going to heal you, what do you have to lose? And I was like, you know what? You're right. So I was like, you know what, Mom? I want to go to Wentzville, Missouri. So we packed up our car. We took a long road trip all the way out there. And on the way, our car broke down. And I was like, okay. And the words that came out of my mouth were like totally the Holy Spirit. And I was like, well, Mom, I know the devil doesn't want us to go and because, you know, our car broke down and we're going and God's going to heal me. And I like, it came out of my mouth and I was like, did I really just say that? But it was like faith declaring like God is going to heal me. And I went, I was like, God, if we broke down, we're getting there and you're going to heal me. And I expect it. So I remember that night that we finally got there, I walked in and the service hadn't even started yet. And the presence of God was so overwhelming that my legs like began to buckle and I almost like fell over. And I was like, tonight's gonna be lit guys. Like, <laughs> so I just like knew, I was like, tonight's my night. So I got in the service, you know, the word was preached, this pastor, he's awesome. And after that, there was time for people to come up and get prayer. And I was like, okay, this is my moment. Like I'm gonna get healed. So I go up to the front and I remember him praying for me. And he's like, you really need to relax. And I was like, I'm trying to relax, but like I can't really relax. Like, and so he prayed for me. And at that time I had Lyme disease, but I also didn't share with you guys this, but I had severe scoliosis in my back. And I had had a back injury playing basketball and also a neck injury where my neck was rotated 10 degrees. And it was like the worst injury that the doctor had ever seen. And she's like, I really don't know what we're gonna do. And my scoliosis was so bad in my back and I was in so much pain all the time. I couldn't even walk, like my dad would have to carry me. And I just remember like crying because I was in pain all day, every day. And they're like, we're gonna have to put metal rods in your back. And so I was like, well, if Jesus wants to heal Lyme disease, I think he can heal my back too. So he prayed for me, God healed me of Lyme disease. God healed the scoliosis in my back, healed my neck injury. I literally have no pain to this day, no side effects of Lyme or anything to this day. And actually, real quick, um, when the week that I left to go to this service, I was being weird and I slammed my thumb in the car door and I broke it. And it hurt really bad in that night. Jesus healed my thumb too. Like, it was absolutely crazy. And all the glory and the honor goes to him. And, you know, when you're diagnosed with Lyme disease, that's something that you'll always have. But I'm completely free. I'm completely healed. I'm here today. And I just have so much hope. And I know that whatever you guys are going through in here, whether it's something maybe in your family, maybe your parents went through a divorce or are going through a divorce or you struggle with fear or anxiety or depression or someone that you're really close to hurt you really bad, whatever it is, I just want you to know that Jesus tonight wants to completely change your life, that he wants you to have a true encounter and just wants to reveal his love to you. 
And so something I didn't even tell you guys about is during the time where I ended up getting really sick, by the grace of God, I don't really know how I had the strength to do this, but I started a YouTube channel. And some of you guys may know about it. I feel like a lot of you do. Um, but it was all like totally God and I didn't really think, I was like, okay God, I feel like I'm supposed to start this YouTube channel. So I did. And I remember I had like 10,000 subscribers at the time and I was like, God, if this is something like, or my mom actually said this, she's like, if this is something that Jessica is really supposed to do, then increase her subscribers from 10,000 to 20,000 next week. It was Friday night and by the next Thursday, I'd hit 20,000 subscribers, 10,000 subscribers within like six days. It was absolutely insane. And now to this day, my YouTube channel has over 320,000 subscribers. Um, yeah. And my videos go into countries all over the world, places where people can't even worship Jesus freely. The name of Jesus can't even be proclaimed. And I know, I remember when I was a little girl, God told me and gave me a verse in Isaiah that I'll be a prophet to the nations. And just to be able to see his faithfulness and how just making YouTube videos, they're going into places like Saudi Arabia and Iraq and places where they can't worship Jesus. My videos are getting there and people are getting to know Jesus. So God has been so faithful and the next few years, I really struggled with my identity, to be honest with you guys. When I stopped playing basketball, I was like totally lost. And yeah, God had healed me. All this amazing stuff had happened. But I didn't really know who I was because for years I was like, I put my worth and everything that I was in my success as a basketball player and my talent. And I came to a point where I felt so broken and lost. And I was like, God, what is wrong? And he's like, you haven't found your identity in me yet. And so over the next few years, I kind of struggled with that, but I had a real encounter with Jesus and he made my identity known to me. And I want to encourage you guys tonight that no matter what you do, it's never going to be enough. When God gives you your identity, it's going to completely set you free and change your life. Like there's nothing like knowing that you guys are a son and a daughter of the king of the universe, that you're beautiful, you're precious, you're chosen, you're not forsaken, you're accepted, you are loved. And when you have that real revelation of who God says you are, it changes everything. And I had that revelation and I was like, man, I am like set. God set me free from fear. He set me free from anxiety. He set me free from depression. Those were things that I really dealt with. And when I really had that like encounter, I was like, wow, Jesus, you are just so good. And his love seriously breaks off everything. Um, so fast forward to a few years later, I wanted to play my senior year of high school. I know I just graduated, but like I told you guys, I missed a whole year of school. So really my senior year was like technically my junior year of school, but it was my last year to play basketball. And so I got back into playing again. I was so excited to be back on the court. Everyone's like, oh my gosh, you're doing so awesome. I'm like, I know I've been played for so long. And I was having so much fun with my friends. And I remember one night at practice, I went up for a layup and I came down and there was a girl behind me and she hit me really, really hard. And just the way I landed, I landed on my leg and it went out and she hit me from behind and I shattered my kneecap. Um, and I like can just tell you guys, it was the most painful thing I've ever experienced in my entire life. It was like a rubber band just like snapped inside. but. The pain that I felt was nothing compared to the heartbreak that I felt because at that moment, I knew I was like, wow, my dream of being able to play basketball in college and be able to play my last year is like officially over. And I just remember like falling to the ground and it was like my heart was just ripped out of my chest and stomped on and like shattered into a million pieces. And so I'll never forget that night, I came home in the car and I was praying and I've heard the voice of God so many times, but it was so crystal clear. And he said, Jessica, you are my chosen daughter. I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have not forsaken you and that I am with you wherever you go. And in that moment, I was like, wow, like that's amazing. But 
I was still like, God, why did this happen? And I still don't know why it did happen, but I do know that over the nine months le- like after that, after I had like the emergency surgery and I had a full leg cast on, I lost all the strength in my leg and I had to do physical therapy for nine months. It was crazy. God and my relationship with him grew like it never had before. I had nothing to do because like I couldn't walk. So I would lay in bed and I would just talk to God. I'd read my Bible. I would pray. I would watch messages, listen to podcasts. I listened to Elevation Worship like 24-7. And my faith in him and my relationship with him became so personal and so real. And my bond with God, like, it could not be broken. He became my best friend. And that seriously changed my entire life. And a cool story that I'll share with you guys is I listened to Elevation Worship Music that whole entire time, and it gave me so much hope. And after I overcame everything, the next year, Elevation Worship reached out to me and asked if I would want to help promote their newest album called There's a Cloud on my YouTube channel. And I kid you not, you guys, that was like the best day of my life. Like, I was crying. I called my mom on the phone. I'm like, oh, my gosh, you won't imagine what just happened. Like, I was so excited. And just to see, like, a little glimpse of the faithfulness of God, because he had spoken to me. He said, Jessica, I'm about to make up for lost time. And he did that. He opened so many other doors in my life. I've become a student leader here at Epic tonight. I'm sharing with you guys my testimony. And I believe that God is making up for all the things that I missed out on in high school. And so just to share with you guys, my knee is awesome now. Uh, The doctor said I'd never be able to really bend it again or do anything normal, go hiking, play sports. My knee is like exactly the same that it was before. All praise to Jesus. Um, I can do everything that I did before and even better. And I just seriously, I love you guys all so much. And I just want each and every one of you guys to know that God loves you. And I know that you hear that all the time. But the Father's love for you is so amazing and so reckless. It's seriously the most beautiful love story that's ever been told. And I want you to know that God is not a God of rules and religion, that he's a God of relationship, and that he wants to be your best friend. He doesn't want it to be all these things things that you have to do to be right with him. When you accept Jesus Christ to be your personal Lord and Savior, every mistake, everything you've ever done that you think you know is like so bad, it's totally eradicated and washed by the blood of Jesus. And he sees you as a daughter and a son of the King. He, when he sees you, when you accept Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, he sees you as holy and righteous and he sees Jesus in you. He doesn't see you for your mistakes and for your failures. And so I just want to pray over all of you guys tonight. And I believe that Jesus is here in the midst, that he wants to personally touch your life tonight. And I just want to pray that over you. So if you guys would just bow your heads and close your eyes. And before I pray over you, I just believe that God tonight wants to tell you guys who you are. He wants you to know your identity in him. And so I just want to give you guys a minute and just say, you know, Jesus, God, who do you say I am? All right, well, I'm going to pray over you guys right now. Father God, I thank you so much for every single person that's in this building tonight. I thank you for your sons and daughters, and I thank you so much for how you love them with an endless, reckless, amazing love. I thank you, Jesus, that tonight you are here in this place and that you are going to move in their lives in Jesus' name. I thank you for the plans and the purposes that you have for their lives, and I declare in Jesus' name that no weapon formed against them shall prosper. I pray, Holy Spirit, that right now you would speak to every single one of your sons and daughters and reveal to them your love that father you'd wrap your arms around them in jesus name and that jesus you would make yourself known to them i pray holy spirit that they would encounter you right now like they never have before and that your identity for them would be made known in jesus name amen and with everyone's heads bowed and your eyes closed real quick I just want to give you guys an opportunity to fully surrender your life over to Christ and 
Seriously, it's the best decision you'll ever make because if it wasn't for Jesus, I wouldn't be here. And after everything he's done in my life, he's so good and he wants to do even more amazing things in your life. And so if you've never accepted Jesus and like fully surrendered your heart over to him, I wanna give you that opportunity tonight. Or maybe you gave your life to Christ and fully surrendered a while ago, but you're like, you know what, Jessica, I wanna rededicate my life to Jesus tonight. Or even if you've given your life to Christ and you wanna fully surrender every single part of yourself over, I want you guys to just raise your hand with everyone's heads bowed. Thank you guys there's any of you, just raise your hand, make that step of faith tonight in Jesus' name that, God, I'm going to make a stand tonight and that I want to encounter you like I never have before. Thank you, Jesus. All right, well, the Bible says that if we believe in our heart and we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord, that we'll be saved. And so I want to just pray this all together as a family. So just repeat this, all of us together after me. Dear God, Thank you for sending your son, Jesus, to pay the greatest price for me on the cross. Jesus, I believe that you died on the cross for me. And I confess with my mouth that you are my Lord and my Savior. Tonight, I fully surrender every part of my life and my whole heart over to you. I declare Jesus that I am a child of God and that I am loved, forgiven, and accepted by you. In Jesus' name, amen.